Oh, look at the hearts going. Tomo, turn away. <laughs> Hold on a sec. I need to see what's happening here. Oh, they're so happy. Look at this joy-filled, masochist in a little pain. He loves pain. Um, but that has nothing to do with what's going on in that bed right now. Hey guys and gals, welcome back to RimWorld, a colony simulator by Tynan Sylvester. And I say welcome back because a long time ago in a galaxy far, far away, I did actually play some RimWorld here on the channel. But it has been at least, at least a year, maybe two? I don't even remember, that's how long it's been. And the last time I played was in much earlier Alpha version, I don't even know, 12, 13, 14, something like that. We're now on Alpha 18, that just landed on Steam a few days ago. Lots of new content to play around with, and I'm excited to get started with you guys. And if you want uh, if you want to check the game out for yourself, there's a link down below in the description. So, there you go. Alright, let's start up a new colony and get cranking. Choose scenario. So, we now have um, three scenarios to choose from. This is new. I don't remember having multiple scenarios. There was only one at the time I played last, and that was this one right here. The classic RimWorld experience. Crash landed where you have three survivors that crash land on the planet down there and they must survive and thrive and try to get off the planet and they start with a bunch of random uh, materials that fall out of the, the space craft that crashes in space or blows up or whatever and um, they can use this to bootstrap their colony to get the thing up and running and try to get to be self-sufficient and uh, yeah that's pretty cool Lost Tribe is um, five people but it looks like they're more primitive. They come with clubs and spears and knives, three random pets, and uh, a little bit of wood to build with. Okay, and then a rich explorer. So one rich dude out to experience the universe on his own. Looks like he was uh, maybe a middle manager, saved up all his money, bought a spaceship, and shot out into outer space to start a new life. He's got a, a charge rifle and a random pet. Now, wait a minute, do we get a random pet here too? Oh, yes, we do. Okay, gotta have a pet. A cat, dog, gerbil, whatever. But that'll be fun. All right, how about we just go with the crash land? And I'm going to stick with that one because that's the one I'm most familiar with. Um, we can also go to the Steam Workshop, by the way, and download fan-made scenarios. And we can edit scenarios and create new ones as well. But we're not going to mess with that. I think we're just going to go with this one because, again, I'm most familiar with this. And it's a pretty good start. It's three people. I think five's too many and one's not enough. I think three is, like, uh, just perfect at least for this Let's Play. So let's go ahead and get to the AI Storyteller. So the Storyteller is kind of like the Dungeon Master of our game. She's not, she doesn't really exist in the game, but she throws things at us, challenges at us every now and then to test our skill and uh, try to make funny things happen. Fun stuff happen, and it sure does. So we're going to go with um, Cassandra Classic on Rough. So this determines how difficult we want these challenges to be. And I think Rough will be good for us. All right, Rough Cassandra Classic. We like it, Rough. Uh, now we got to create the world. And this is a randomly generated world based on a seed. And we can pick any seed here or even type our, our own. Did I just see Paul? I sure did. All right. I would buy it too fast. Let's do Paul. And we're going to just stick with the uh, the defaults here. 30% globe coverage. That's the land of the, um, the land mass. And then uh, rainfall and temperature normal. So the landmass just determines how much of the world is going to be covered in land that you can choose from. And you're only going to choose one tiny little parcel of land. So 30% is plenty. And now we shall generate our randomly procedurally generated sandbox that we must survive in and thrive and eventually escape. Because I think in this scenario you can actually build up like a spaceship and fly back home. And here we are. We get to choose our landing site. So, like I said, 30% of the planet is covered. And we have multiple biomes to choose from. We've got desert, extreme desert. And then we have arid scrubland, shrubland, tropical rainforest. There's actually a new swamp now, too. Oh, there it is. Tropical swamp. The Great Laraluga Swamp. In fact, these um, I think these titles are new, too. I don't remember names. Name location, so that adds a little bit of flavor to the game. You can work that into your narrative, and that's what we do here. We're all about the role play and the narrative. Not optimal performance. If you're looking for an optimal playthrough with someone that knows what they're doing, you're on the wrong channel. We're just going to have some fun here. A donkey swamp. That's perfect. You know, from Shrek? Donkey? Yes. 
Donkey Swamp. We gotta go in the Donkey Swamp. And I'd like to be near a road and a river. Because I, uh, I've never played the game with those features yet. And they're relatively new. So that would be fun. So, Tall Squid Mountain. <laughs> Alright, we gotta go with the Donkey Swamp and the Tall Squid Mountains. Can we actually get mountains in the... In the uh, in a swamp too, next to a river and a road. Oh, that would be fantastic. Now let's just make sure there's no hostile factions too close. There's one down here. That's the Red Skull and Bones. Uh, we got other factions here as well, but they're not hostile. All right, I got the ideal location. It is in a swamp because that's one of the new biomes, and I want to see that. It's the Donkey Swamp, in fact, and it's in the Tall Squid Mountains, or at least in the foothills of it. In fact, we have small hills here. You can see that tiny little speck there. That's the hill. We have a dirt road and a river, which is something that I wanted to play around with because I have not seen those two features yet. It's a temperate area, so we don't have to worry about any extreme heat or extreme cold. The temperature, the average temperature is 55 degrees Fahrenheit, which is very tolerable. Winter does get down to 26 degrees, which will be cold. Uh, for, that's actually freezing, below freezing. Um, so we're going to need heaters most of the year, but the summers are tolerable at 84 degrees, not too hot, but we'll probably want to get air conditioning to keep our people happy, right? The growing period is only half the year, so we definitely want to make sure we start in spring and we can get growing right away because we're going to have to grow a bunch of food and then store it for the winter when it's not growing any longer. And I want to bump the map size to medium. I don't want to go into large because uh, we don't really need a large map, especially on the swamp, which is going to be tough to move around in because it's got dense vegetation and marshy terrain make it very difficult to move here. So the bigger the map, the more you're going to have to move around probably to pick stuff up. Uh, all right. So I think that's good. I think we're ready to go. Let's get to the donkey swamp. Oh, yeah. Actually, we got to pick our people first. <laughs> so these are the people that fall out of the spaceship onto the land, and they will be... Our colonists that we get to play around with. And who's this fellow right here? Lucas Blackjack Wakefield. Looks pretty good. He's got some pretty good skill. I think we're going to be very interested in growing skill for cutting down plants. And I'm fairly certain that growing determines your plant cutting speed and ability. And in dense vegetation, that's going to be important. This guy looks pretty good. He's got an old gunshot wound, though. But it doesn't hurt him too much. Um, yeah, he's all right. Very good medicine. Ah. But his traits are Bloodlust and Masochist, which aren't terrible. But you know what? We don't want perfect people. Perfect people are boring. We want people that are flawed. And he's even got a daughter, Carlotta Brady. Where is Carlotta? Here she is. How's she? Um, oh, she does not do skilled labor. She can't cook, construct, grow, mine, or anything. <laughs> yeah, no, she's horrible. We don't need to bring the daughter. So anyway, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to go through all these people, and uh, I'll, I'll choose three. We need to get three. Three up here, and we can even re-roll these very simply. Ooh, wait a minute. This guy's pretty good. He's like just a youngster, but he's very passionate about a lot of things. He's a pessimist, a pyromaniac, and abrasive. Oh, he could be fun. Tom. Tomo. Tomo Lake. <laughs> and he can grow, and he can cook. Yeah, all right. Tomo, welcome aboard. I think we just slide him up. Yeah, that's how we do that. All right, so we've got Blackjack and Tamo, and now I think we need um, we need a, someone of the female persuasion. So how about if we... Uh, let's see, what do we have here? Oh, this poor girl. She's, she's pretty old, and her health isn't very good. I don't want anyone with terrible health, to be honest. Okay, I think we're ready to get started. We got the diversity I was looking for. We have Lexi Fisher here, age 44. She's got a bite scar on her shoulder, but it's... Not too debilitating anyway, but she's uh, she's very steadfast, which is great. She's a tiny bit lazy, and she's a brawler. She likes to smack people around with her fisty cuffs. Great. I renamed this fella to uh, Pablo Punchwood. That's my character that I usually play, right? And we got Tomo, uh, the youngster at age 15. So, yeah, we have a pretty good assortment of skills, and I, I love this down here, the team skills that shows you everything combined, the highest and the most passionate um, skills shown down here of the group, right? So I think we have everything covered. Mining is a little bit low, but I don't imagine we're going to do too much mining here in the swamp. Hopefully. So, yeah, I think we're ready. Let's make Planetfall. Alright, here we are in the Donkey Swamp. 
The three of you awake in your crypto sleep sarcophagi to the sound of sirens and ripping metal. You barely get to the escape pods before the ship is torn apart. Sometime later, you land in this unknown rim world. As pieces of the shredded starship fall around you, you start making plans to survive. And here they come, the, the crypto sleep sarcophagi. And everybody's out. And we got a doggy. It's uh, Irina, female Labrador retriever. Awesome. Okay, now, first things first. Let's save the game. So the first thing we like to do is scroll out and have a look at the map. Shallow water, huh? Oh, dang it. I thought that was maybe something solid we could build on. Because it's going to be tough to build here. Apparently, you can't build on uh, mud and marshy land. Like that right there, mud, you can't build on. So it's going to be a challenge finding a place to get started. Here's the road. I love it. It goes diagonally right through the uh, right through the map. There's the river right next to it. Pretty cool. And there sure is a lot of vegetation. Look at it. And we have various critters here. Oh, that's a tree. An ibex. Uh, oh, turkey. Oh, just in time for Thanksgiving tomorrow. All right, sweet. Turtle. Okay. Um, let me look around here and decide on a place to go. Because it looks like we are going to have a lot of mud and marshland around here. Oh, dang it. Maybe over here, there's a couple of big walls we can use. All right, well, I just looked around the map. There is no ideal location to build in a swamp because it's all marshy soil and mud and shallow water. So I think this is as good a spot as any. Let's unforbid our building supplies and get started. Uh, obviously gonna make a stockpile somewhere. So let's do that with the zone tool and we'll put a stockpile right here. And I'm pretty sure they're going to chop down those trees at the same time, right? All right, start stockpiling, folks. And Lexi, why don't you grab the knife? Where's that knife? She's the brawler, right? She likes to stab things. We've got to arm everybody here. Unforbid the rifle. Give that to Pablo Punchwood. And then Tamo is already uh, carrying some metal over to the stockpile like a good boy. And <laughs> lock and load, Punchwood. And once you grab that revolver, I don't think he can really shoot very well, can he? Oh, no. Tombo's a beginner. Utter beginner. <laughs> but at least uh, Pablo Punch, we can shoot very well. In fact, he's a skilled professional. And Lexi just likes to stab people. She's a brawler. Very nice. And what do you do, doggy? What do you do, Irina, the female Labrador? Age seven? Wow. She's kind of old, actually. Oh, Tomo is throwing up after the crypto sleep traveling in the crypto sleep sarcophagi right all right we gotta get building a a bit of a uh a structure here and we're gonna put it right next to the um the, what's that new lovers what already we just got here jump to location <laughs> i wonder who this is lexi there we go Lexi, the therapist, attempted to woo Punchwood into a romance. Punchwood agreed and is now Lexi's lover. Well, that was fast. Yeah, okay. Well, you gotta make do, right? So, while uh, while we're waiting for them to do stuff, I guess we should probably do a little planning. Um, we're gonna need food. So, let's grab as much natural food as we can in the area. Oh, here's some more wood down here. Gotta unforbid that, otherwise I'll never touch it. I don't want them walking down there to get the metal just yet. We don't need the metal. I kind of want them to focus on building up this first, our first shack, cozy cabin, because we got to get beds made up, just like the game says. Make your beds. And I don't see a lot of, uh, I don't see a lot of food around here. What is this stuff? A wild heel root. That's gonna be handy. It's a medicine, right? Oh, here's all the food down here. There's a ton of it. Ooh. Uh, yeah, I don't want them to get that just yet. I want them to build. In fact, let's speed this up. It's going to take forever if we go that slow. And we should probably do these priorities here. We want everybody to grow. And that's plant cutting. No, no, oh, no, there's a specific plant cutting. All right, plant cutting is important. Everybody do that. The growing, we can leave to one grower. Put that back the way it was. Our best doctor will be Punchwood. And Lexi the therapist can fill in in a pinch. Everybody needs to flick, right? That's important. Turn lights on and off. I think that's how that works. Let's get some doors in here. 
two doors to lead out into the stockpile. And you guys need to chop down some of those trees inside there. Let's chop them down. In fact, if I, I think if I just put in floors, tell them to put floors in, we'll chop them down by default, right? So this is just to get our beds inside here, maybe a, a dining room table. Nothing fancy, nothing big. But we'll, uh, we'll expand out from there, obviously. We're going to be here for a long, long time. There's no rush. But you want to get the beds made up before the sun goes down. That could be important. We want to get all the materials inside because they will deteriorate out here. Exposed to the elements. Uh, Tamo has a zero construction. I don't think I'm going to let him build anything. So we'll keep that at zero. All right, let's get those beds out. It's under furniture, wooden beds. Let's put three wooden beds in. One. Oh, wait a minute. Wait a minute, we have a couple now. So can we do a double bed? Yes, we can. A double bed <laughs> for the new lovers. Should we put it right next to Tamo? Uh, sure, he might learn a thing or two. All right, we're just gonna let them rip for now. Hopefully they get this done before the night falls and we can do a fire in here. Let's put a fire in the corner. Whoops, it's not really in the corner, is it? Well, I can't put it there because of the tree, I think. Can I? No, I cannot. Somebody chopped down that tree. Tomo's already in bed, that little stinker. And Lexi's gonna sleep on the floor and Punch was gonna sleep outside. We didn't get the beds done in time. And they're not even sleeping together. Oh, yeah, yeah. All right. Well, then forget the fire. Wow. We didn't accomplish very much today, did we? Mm -mm. Let's get through this first night. They're not going to like this at all. Wanted to sleep with Lexi, but he slept on the floor outside on the ground in the cold and he's hungry. Well, that's your choice, man. You should have finished up the beds. I guess I could have forced them to finish it, right? Prioritize finishing that bed. And why don't you help her out? Yes. Now, guys, hop in bed. Got a couple of hours left. Punchwood, get in there. Woohoo. <laughs> All right, let's slow it down a little bit. Oop, saving. All right, Tamo's up with the sun. That's what I like to see. Oh, we got to give the doggy a place to sleep too, right? Just a uh, doggy animal sleeping spot. Uh, put it over here by the bed. That's nice. And I want to get that fire going again, but we got to cut this stuff down. How do we chop. Man, the lovers are sleeping in today. <laughs> they should just adopt Tomo, right? So yeah, mom and dad are sleeping in, Tomo. Might as well adopt the poor kid. Shout dog, gonna chop that down. We got some heel root in here. Snatch it. And hey, what's going on with this? I'm still working on it. I gotcha. I gotcha. I didn't realize Punchwood was really the only builder we have. That could be a problem. He's going to be a busy guy. All right, let's unforbid. Well, it's not unforbid that yet. I don't want them to focus on that. I, what, I, what I need them to do is, hold on, let me just pause the action here. I want to get these strawberries because we're going to need the food. We're going to run out of our, um, our package survival meals pretty soon. There's another little bush over here. And where else? We do have some livestock out there we can kill. Well, livestock. Uh, wild animals. Not really livestock. But we can eventually tame animals, right? And grow them. Maybe chickens and cows. <laughs> All right. Tombo sweeping up. Good boy. Let's get a 2x2 two two table in here. And let's put it over here in the corner. And put a couple of stools in. Rotate. Rotate those around. There we go. So now we'll have a place to sit down and eat. Oh, I gotta get the floors under the doors. I always forget those floors under the doors. Boom. Boom. That's a good start. Me thinks. Now. Let's get that fire in here. That'll keep us toasty warm in the night. Although I don't think it matters too much here. It is springtime. What is the temperature? What's the temperature? How do we get temps? Oh, there it is. 46 degrees. Holy smokes. It's pretty cold. Yeah, so this will give off a little heat for a couple of days until we can get a proper heater in installed. 
um, but for now that's gonna have to do so outdoors 46 82 degrees inside okay that's better everybody's gonna sit down and have a meal I think the dog just ate something too <laughs> did he don't fall in the hole what's your name again dog Irina Irina almost fell in the hole now let's just slow it down for a second because these guys are making me crazy going too quick um, I need to go a little slower and look around where are you going Tomo he's gonna go get the berries that's a good boy I tell you that kid works he's a hard worker Let's get the stockpile covered. Um, I think that's going to be important so the stuff doesn't get ruined. Um, actually, no. No, 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 no. Let's make a grow zone. Grow zone. So there's a bunch of rich soil up here. Oh, how do I get it? There it is. Rich soil and rich soil over here. There's also a lot of mud. But I think we can put our farm over there. Yeah, let's do it. So a grow zone. And it's hard to see that rich soil, but I know it's in there. Okay, I think that's the start of it. No, it's not. That's mud. Okay, well, it looks like I can't put the grow zone on the mud anyway, so I'm assuming all this is rich. Kind of a 5 by 7 but not quite so much. And we're going to do... Let's do rice here. Um, I wonder if I should expand that out. Is this rich down here too? Yeah, it is. Let's... um. Let's expand that out a little bit. Can I see you again, please? Oh, we need a we need a dumping zone too. Right? So we'll do that in a second. So there's our rice field, and I think we're gonna make a is this all rich here? Uh we'll stick potatoes over here. Uh sort of six by six potatoes. I don't think we're going to get like perfectly made up square buildings or growing zones in, in this biome. So we're just going to have to live with it. It's going to be kind of organically shaped. Uh, whatever happens, happens, I suppose. All right, let's pick up the pace here, people. So they're chopping down the wood for the growing zone. That's awesome because we're going to need the wood for building. And I think now we can get our stockpile in in a, uh, in a inside a structure. As long as I, uh, see that right there, I can't build there because it's marshy. So we're gonna have to go around it. That is a real hassle. I guess we can go this way. We're gonna lose some of the stockpile though. Well, we're gonna lose some of the stockpile. Can't be helped. I'm going to make that just like that. Easy peasy for now. And now it is bedtime, apparently. And I don't know why Punch was looking at Tamo when he's got his girly friend right next to him. And the doggy on the far side of the bed. <laughs> so cozy in there. I love it. Oh, somebody's up and eating. So I'm just making a dumping stockpile zone over here. This is mostly just marshy soil. Need defenses. Yeah. Okay. I don't think we need defenses yet. We might get like a mad animal sent after us, but that's not too much of a concern. I'm sure Punchwood can handle one crazy squirrel or a bunny wabbit. Alright, what else should we do? How about some floors? Oh, you know what we need? We need joy. Let's put some horseshoes down. Some wood horseshoes. And we'll put that right here. The only other clear area in the entire swamp. <laughs> and it looks like we're going to need doors out of here, obviously. So let's put a door right there. So I just realized that we cannot grow right now. It's a bad seasonal temperature. The ground's too frozen. And that's why my farmers aren't doing anything with the farms even though I set them to uh, prioritize growing. Both Lexi and Tamo are pretty good at growing, but we only got one seed in the ground so far, and that's because it's frozen. But it's only going to be frozen for a few more days. It'll uh, it'll warm up on the 6th of April, May. That's when our growing period begins. So, so right around the corner, but in the meantime, that means we're going to have to eat uh, wild berries and maybe do some hunting. We don't have a lot of wild berries around, or at least not many close by, but we do have some turkeys we can hunt. There's a turkey right there. And with Thanksgiving, real Thanksgiving tomorrow, um, that's kind of uh, kind of appropriate. But we can't 
eat animals without butchering them and cooking them first. So let's make another room here. And look at all this marshy soil. Yeah, we're going to make like a kitchen and a butchery right here. And why don't we put some doors there? And I'd like those doors prioritized, sir. And we can open these up. Leave them open. So that they don't have to um, manually open them every time. That'll speed things up a little bit. You can actually queue orders now, I think, if you hold down shift. Is that right? Let's try. Prioritize that and prioritize that. I'm just curious. Yes, you can. Awesome. Very, very nice. All right. It looks like the sun's falling again on our colony. And uh, we're going to have to call it quits here in a moment because we're just about out of time. I don't think we're going to get the kitchen made up today, so we're not going to do any hunting. But, um, yeah, there's Tom the turkey there. we got a male, and I think I saw a female around here, too. So maybe we could just breed them. You know, tame them and breed them. What's up? Hold up. Okay, this is not a bad thing. This is a group from Antheneria Confederacy. They're visiting. They're friendly. we got Gecko and Beryl. Scientist and a joywriter. Okay, come on over. Don't have anywhere for them to stay, unfortunately. Oh! <laughs> Punch would just slam that wall up in front of Lexi's face. Well, that's no way to treat your girly friend, Punch would. She's not going to be your girlfriend for long. You'd treat her like that. Where are you going, Lex? Stargazing! She's like, I don't need him. I'll just stargaze. Let's unforbid that metal there. So, yeah. Let's pick up here in the next episode. And hopefully we get these farms going. Because we're going to need that food source and in the meantime i'll look around for more strawberries in the area and uh hopefully we'll get farming going soon oh there's more metal over here i missed that um yeah i guess we could hunt other animals if we want to save those turkeys we could hunt there's ibex nearby so we could do that oh it looks like tomo's actually going to start working on the farm now yes he's anticipating growing in a couple of days. Oh, here's our uh, friendly neighbors, Beryl and Gecko. Sorry, guys, we don't have any place for you to stay. We don't have any guest rooms. That's something we should probably do. Man, it is so slow moving through this terrain. It's horrible. And there they go, off to bed. The, uh, the, the big happy family here and the Punchwood Colony. So with that, my friends, I think we're going to call it quits. Hope to see you guys in the next episode. Let me know if you want to see more. Leave a like in the video. Oh, look at the hearts going. Tomo, turn away. <laughs> Hold on a sec. I need to see what's happening here. Oh, they're so happy. Look at this joy-filled, masochist in a little pain. He loves pain. Um, but that has nothing to do with what's going on in that bed right now. Had a nice chat with Lexi. Oh, they're just talking. They're just talking. Okay, that's fine. Nice chat. They're just chatting in bed before they pass out for sleep. Okay, that's great. All right, so I think we'll see you guys in the next episode. Well, I know we'll see you guys in the next episode, hopefully, anyway. And uh, have a good day, and have a good Thanksgiving. Um, we'll see you next time. Take care. Bye-bye.